a, a group of us, we're going to talk about the intercloud marketplace. Um, Omri uh, and um, Damien will be joining me here shortly to uh, do some demonstrations of some applications that we're running on top of Cisco Cloud Services presently. So the objective of the session is to provide an overview of the Cisco intercloud, to give you an early preview of the Cisco marketplace, and to show some demonstrations of applications on top of the Cisco cloud. Our agenda this afternoon is I'm going to cover the intercloud principles, uh, give you a marketplace overview, and then Omri and Damien will give you some demonstrations of applications that are running on top of the uh, Cisco cloud. And then I'll kind of wrap things up with how to engage with us if you would like to participate in the Cisco marketplace. And then we'll wrap it up with some Q&A. So uh, the intercloud principles. You know, in essence, Cisco is, is all in on the internet of everything. And the intercloud is really our strategy to execute on that vision. And we're focused on building our, our cloud in terms of scale, breadth, and depth um, of integration between clouds. Ultimately, we want to enable workload mobility and portability, um, and also bring value to that infrastructure through things like the marketplace. And we're delivering products and solutions and services to help our customers, partners, and, and Cisco to deliver on that vision. So from an enterprise cloud perspective, you know, we're very focused on enterprise workloads. Our cloud is purpose-built for enterprises. That's our, our focus. Um, you know, obviously there are different target markets, and I'll address those here shortly. But, you know, very much our cloud is targeted towards the enterprise. And we want to make enterprise workloads um, work optimally on top of that. And that's why we're, you know, as the... Uh, world's largest and arguably the best uh, provider of uh, networking services throughout the world, that's a, what we can bring to the table. And obviously, many enterprise workloads are network dependent. And you know, so that helps a great deal in, in addressing enterprise workloads. Now, we're also very interested in helping native cloud applications um, within the, you know, the development. And we had talks earlier today and, and just before I joined here uh, around developing native cloud applications. You know, we live in a DevOps world and CI, CD, you know, continuous integration, continuous delivery is, is very real. And so with the advent of, of Docker and, and things like Nirmata, which Damien's gonna be covering here shortly, it, it really allows the, the ability to deliver on, on that promise. And you know, we're also helping our, our customers in this IoT, IOE world to fully engage uh, and take advantage of big data and services like Hadoop um, and bringing those applications and services within into the marketplace. And, and lastly, you know, obviously Cisco and, and its partners are very focused on collaboration and, and video and, um, and we have the networking backbone to deliver on that. And we want to make sure we're you know, connecting. That's, that's part of our, our brand, it's part of our vision, it's part of what we're working with partners to deliver to the end users. So that's really, uh, you know, the focus within the enterprise uh, private cloud sector. And then, but also we need to enable uh, the hybrid capability within that, so bursting, right? So, so it's not just about enterprise private clouds, it's also about partner clouds. Cisco is very much a partner channel driven company. Um, you know, we've been around for 30 years, we built this business on top of this very tight integration with our partners and the partner ecosystem. And you know, we're helping them deliver uh, solutions like hosted collaboration services. There's roughly three million of these in market today, right now. And we're also helping customers stand up enterprise, or rather um, IaaS um, in both small, medium, large, and community type uh, environments on different types of stacks, be it VMware, Microsoft, and, and now OpenStack. And we're also helping customers deliver on some Microsoft as a service uh, applications. And you know, if you were in the session yesterday with, with, with my boss, um, who we talked a little bit about the marketplace, we had in there uh, a gentleman from Citrix who covered 
uh, you know, who, who has an application running on top of, of our Cisco cloud today and delivering the desktop as a service solution to customers through Cisco cloud services. And, and lastly, uh, another uh, key solution that we're helping partners enable is disaster recovery as a service. So SunGuard, uh, one of our uh, partners and also a partner within InterCloud, is delivering DR as a service and we're helping them uh, do that within the partner cloud and we're also working with them to make that solution available within our marketplace as well. And another key area that we're focused on within InterCloud is the cloud service and applications uh, sector. So today, within, within the enterprise, we're delivering WebEx, Meraki, and security. In the future, we're helping those, those businesses and enterprise really take advantage of the new analytics and you know, utilizing the, 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 the big data that spun off from IoT and IOE. I mean, it's literally zettabytes worth of information. And how do you take that information and make meaning of it and make it actionable? And then tying that into security with, with things like you know, ScanSafe and, and monitored threat defense and, and some of the services that Cisco brings along with its partners. And, you know, and we're also working with uh, SAP on delivering HANA as a service. Um, I mentioned earlier uh, virtual desktop as a service with, with Citrix and, um, and obviously focused very heavily on the IoT, IOE space. Um, and then you know, lastly at the bottom here you, you, see, uh, you see the public cloud sector. So you know, I, t I mentioned a little earlier that we're enabling workload mobility and portability. That's very important. So within these four clouds you can take a workload you can move it to the right cloud at the right time, which is very important. We want to not necessarily lock in workloads. We want to help customers, partners, and end users take full advantage of what the cloud can, can deliver on. And you may have you know, a, a, des, a dev test workload that is in your private cloud. You need to spin up um, some more instances and burst that to a public cloud. So we're, we're making that available within Microsoft Azure, Amazon Web Services, and we're also evaluating additional clouds within the public cloud and then also within um, the intercloud ecosystem as well. So that's our vision, and the vision is, is actually getting traction in the market. So uh, as of today, we have roughly 45 partners globally in the intercloud partner ecosystem. Companies like Accenture and BT and Deutsche Telekom and British Telecom and Portugal Telecom. And matter of fact, we've uh, delivered uh, a CCS node within the uh, Telstra data center, just launched that GA here uh, a couple months ago, and are, they are part of our intercloud ecosystem, and we're enabling workloads to be deployed within their environment, um, and we're rolling that out with, with partners such as Deutsche Telekom, and, and then you can see all the other folks that, that we're working with. And, you know, and at the end of the day, we're building the world's largest cloud, and you know, we will have rough, roughly 250 data centers globally to deliver on this vision, which is you know, a audacious goal and one that we're delivering on. So very important. Um, and so you may ask, you know, why are these folks interested in, in partnering with Cisco? And part of the reason they're interested is our, our focus on the target market. So I, I mentioned that we're, we're targeting enterprises, but within the enterprise, you know, there's different target customers. So, so obviously we're in, the, we're in the DevNet zone here. So um, primarily I, I'm interested in, in engaging um, with developers. Uh, who here in the audience, and, and obviously uh, we've got just a couple of folks here. What, are, are you guys developers? No, you're a developer. Uh, enterprise, you're an enterprise, okay. Are you in a, a uh, what type of function within the enterprise? Security? Okay, great. Well, good, you're, you're exactly the target market. How about, how about you, sir? What, what? CEO? CTO, okay, well, you're our target market too. So, look, I think the, 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 the value um, to, to you guys for what we're building is it gives you control again, right? What's happened within cloud is, is you know, folks have been off, uh, you know, lighting up instances at, at public clouds and, and enterprises and CTOs uh, and CIOs have, have lost control. And we want to give that control back to 
you guys, but we also want to make sure that your internal customers get what they need. They still want speed, they want agility, you guys want low cost, you want the functionality, and ultimately that's what InterCloud and the marketplace with the InterCloud is going to deliver on. So, the, the, so why should developers care? I think you, you've heard quite a bit here already on the, the effort that we're making around developers. And so we want developers to build their next SaaS application on top of the Cisco cloud. And the reason that they would do it is because we're network centric. Right? We are building the most comprehensive, network intensive backbone enabled. And while partnering with the world's largest telcos in delivering that. And that's something that will resonate for certain types of, of applications and workloads. And those are IoT and IOE, video, collaboration, mobility. Um, networking is very important. And that really answers the question of why would I develop on Cisco versus, say, an Amazon or a Google or a Microsoft? Because we're going to have a more performant cloud. And the internal benchmarks that we've been performing today have been bearing that out. Obviously, uh, the, the proof is in the pudding in, in the long run, but that's what we're uh, focused on and delivering on. So I, I, I mentioned, uh, you know, the other uh, key target segment is our network-based service providers. So we've got network-based service providers who are focused on NGN, which is next generation networking, NFV, which is network function virtualization, use cases, and they're very concerned about the underlying infrastructure, so we have to develop on that. Uh, key point for them is federation, and I'll touch on that briefly. And ultimately, federation enables rapid deployment, uh, innovation, you can link with the other partners within the ecosystem and get additional offers and footprint and so forth. And then the enterprise, it's, it's all about hybrid workloads, leveraging your existing investments, right? And the, but also taking advantage of public cloud where it makes sense. And you know, we're very focused on uh, open source, open stack. Um, obviously that resonates with the enterprise, but if you've got a virtualized environment, it's typically VMware, maybe a little Microsoft, and it's not that simple, right? So we have to kind of work through that with you, and we're committed to doing that. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a little bit into the marketplace itself. So I touched on the intercloud. This is the world that we live in, right? We live in a world of many clouds. There are Cisco clouds with you know, services such as Meraki and WebEx. You've got public clouds like Google and Amazon. You've got private clouds. You've got partner clouds. They're all a little different, and they all have different applications and services and solutions that reside within them. You, with an enterprise, you probably have some custom applications that you've built that reside in your data center, and you know that may be something you want to potentially make more widely available. Um, that is something that I'm very interested in talking to you about because that is the potential of what we're, we're, our, our vision is for, for marketplace. Um, and you know, in essence, in this world, if you want pieces and parts from these various clouds, you have to go to each individual cloud, and that makes operating extremely hard for you, right, as a CTO, because you got to go to all these different clouds. Wouldn't it be great if you had a single pane of glass? And that's really what the intercloud is is ultimately doing is is creating those those connections between those various clouds, and on top of that is the marketplace. And, and ultimately what the marketplace is doing is aggregating the solutions and services and providing the vision into uh, the underlying infrastructure, take advantage of it, but it's very much, it's an e-commerce website enabling ISVs, service providers, enterprises to be more agile, solution focused, and deliver value to your customers. And you know, our job is to do the heavy lifting on ISV recruitment and developer attainment and really make sure that we're delivering on the, the value there. So, you know, and, and lastly, it's this idea of, of federation um, and tying in our marketplace with your private marketplace and, and delivering on that. So, without further ado, I'm going to uh, hand this over to uh, Omri, who's going to talk a little bit about um, some of the uh, demonstrations we have with uh, the CSR 1000V. Okay, thank you. Let me just set this up here.
Okay, so I'll quickly go through a um, demonstration of the marketplace. And just walk you through also the uh, use case of what we're going to cover. Uh, so we'll go through a very simple scenario that is built around a use case where you have a an application developer that uses CCS, leverages CCS to host their applications and are now looking to uh, get an easy way to allow their consumers of the application to gain a secured way of accessing and consuming the application. Uh, in order to do that, they want to deploy a CSR 1KV. And again, I'll walk you through the process of doing that and you'll see that it's very easy to leverage the marketplace as a single pane of glass to order and deploy applications from the marketplace. So going into the demonstration, you know, the marketplace gives you, again, that's, that's the storefront. That's the single uh, platform that you can consume different types of services. As you can uh, see, you have a search bar. You can explore the marketplace, and there will give you a few featured products uh, broken down into categories. So you have uh, our Cisco services. We have offerings from uh, technology and SaaS partners. We'll uh, see also how that can be done with uh, some of the other uh, applications. And of course, it's very easy to navigate. Uh, I can also uh, quickly uh, do a search. Again, it'll bring me to the right context. And then I can pick an application here, uh, which could be the CSR 1000V. Clicking on it, again, would bring me, oh, I timed out. I need to log in. Clicking on it will give me a page that describes the actual application. This, in this case, it's a virtualized router. Um, you get details, you get pricing information, and you can click on purchase in order to get this uh, service. Now you can then decide where you want to deploy it from within your project. Again, a single front end that easily allows you to take an application and deploy it across the different locations. Of course, if there's dif differentiated pricing, you will get that information here graphically visual visualized. Let's just deploy it on the Texas data center. Again, this is the name of the project. This is where your application is running as an app developer. And once you agree on the terms, you can place the order. And now the order actually goes into the system. I can click on my purchased apps. And you will see that now it is now being fulfilled. So it's in process. We have prepared in advance, of course, another already deployed CSR. So once I log into uh, the CCS dashboard, I can navigate to my project, which is where the application is running. And if I go to the instances, I can see that this is just now in the process of being deployed. I can take one of the uh, previous ones so we can have something that is already up and running. And then, of course, people that are familiar with uh, Cisco can actually see that I have a full-blown uh, router deployed in a virtualized environment. Now, of course, you can use that to then configure and provide different network-based services and gain and grant access to your subscribers. So again, very simple, very intuitive. And of course, when we also look at other applications beyond the Cisco applications and talk about partners that we work with, through the marketplace, again, we can allow partners to publish applications on the marketplace and then have the same experience of rolling out these applications, deploying them across the different cloud environments across the different uh, network, um, network environments. And for that, we'll also bring our next speaker to talk about how this has actually been done for a partner.
Hi, I'm Damien Toledo uh, from Nirmata. I'm a co-founder and VP of engineering. So Nirmata is um, a company that is part of the Cisco marketplace. Uh, we provide a service to uh, deploy cloud native applications on CCS in the cloud. And I'm gonna show you a short clip of how we do that. Um, microservices application or cloud native application is really a new way of developing your applications and operating them in the cloud. Uh, applications are not monolithic anymore. They are made of multiple services that needs to communicate together. That uh, poses some challenges in terms of operation. So that's what we, we want to solve, to help you uh, containerize your applications, deploy them, and operate them in the cloud. So we'll cover a few use cases that uh, typically you want to do uh, for managing your application, including some uh, blue-green type of deployment. So now you can have multiple uh, versions of a given service running in the cloud. So we, we're going to cover that in a minute. So I'm going to show you a, a clip um, of uh, the product. Uh, just need to advance the video. It's a, it's a short clip. Okay. It wasn't started. Uh, so, so I was saying, um, so th this application uh, posed some challenges. Uh, you may want now to scale your application up and down, for instance. The main advantages of microservices it can, is that you can have independent teams working on these microservices, right? You don't have to deploy the whole application in the cloud. You can just deploy small services one at a time. So let's take a look at the product in action. So here what we have is we have already resources provisioned on uh, CCS in the cloud. So you can see all the, the VMs. And from the Horizon console, we can see that. So now, next what we have, we have a, a microservices-based application. That's a shopping application. And you see all the services here. So each of them can be deployed in, independently in the cloud. But together, they form that shopping application. Here, you, what you are seeing is the blueprint of, of the application, and we uh, specify things like, for instance, the Docker image of uh, a service. So let's go ahead and let's deploy the application on CCS in the cloud. Uh, since you have the blueprint, the only thing you have to do is to select the type of environment, let's say a production environment, and now the application is being deployed live on CCS. And each of these services, they may land on a different host, right? Uh, the infrastructure is really independent from the application now. What we are orchestrating is the application on top of CCS. So now you can start manipulating your services independently. So you can pick a service, and for instance, if by miss, or we can look at the, uh, the logs, so that's a problem. So regardless of where this service is in the cloud, I can get the logs out of this container. So we use Docker as a container technology to deploy these microservices. Another thing you can do is, for instance, scale up a given service. So you don't have to, do, to scale the entire application now. If only one part of the application needs to be scaled up, then you can uh, scale. So for instance, here we're going to create four instances of a given service. So now the, uh, the services are being deployed in the cloud again. So now I'm, I'm going to have four other services. Again, I don't have to scale the entire application, but just the part that needs to scale. So that's one of the benefits of this type of architecture. So now we can uh, connect to a service, for instance. And the other thing interesting here is when you use this style of application, uh, you can communicate across services and optimize uh, the networking between these services. You, do not, you don't have to go out through a gateway to communicate between your services. The east-west traffic is being load balanced. So here, for instance, I'm talking to my uh, order services. And if you look at the port number, they keep changing because I'm, I'm talking to my four different instances of the order service. So there is some east-west traffic load balancing happening. And again, if the containers are on the same host, then the traffic is optimized. Uh, the system is also self-healing. 
For instance, if a, a host dies or a container dies, automatically we restart that service. And it may be restarted on, on a different instance. And again, I don't restart the entire application. I just restart what has failed. So that's another huge benefit of this type of architecture. Uh, what's important is also to provide analytics on a per service basis. Now you need to be able to analyze where your services are running and how they are behaving. You can look at the, the analytics from the infrastructure point of view as well. You can pick an instance and see what are the containers running on that instance. So let's take a look at another, um, well, maybe we're going to stop here, actually. We are running out of time. So that was a micro presentation on microservices. And uh, George, if you want to uh, conclude the, the session. Thanks, Damien. Um, so I want to give time to the next group. But if you're interested in learning more, we're, we have the pod over here near the, uh, the welcome area. Um, I'll be manning the booth on Friday. And then I'm going to throw up my uh, contact information. And by all means, if, if you're uh, interested in, in you know, somehow partnering with us or listing, uh, if you have an application that you'd like to get into the marketplace, I'm the guy to talk to. That's my uh, contact information. That's my cell phone and my email. And um, this is where we're going to be in, on Friday if you guys are around. So thank you very much.